All right, everyone. So before I get on to the rest of the video, I wanted to share some uh, friend mail with you. So I'm going to start off with this. And this person does not want to be recognized by name. Uh, she has sent wonderful gifts in the past. Uh, she sent those cookie dough scoopers and uh, food storage containers and many other things. But um, I won't name her. So, okay. Uh, on this one, she sent some hand towels. I don't know if you recall, maybe a month or two ago, I went to the Dollar Tree and I got a couple packs of hand towels or one pack of hand towels and for our bathroom because we didn't we had like one hand towel. <laughs> so um, and then I was about to go buy some more because they weren't too bad. And before I went, we received this in the mail. So she sent a pack of six very nice hand towels, uh, very nice material. So yeah, very nice. I love them. Thank you so much for thinking of me and uh, sending these to me because I love having them. All right, so the hand towels. And then when I went to the Dollar Tree to find a mini loaf pan for the meatloaf that I had made Glenn that one time. Uh, she ordered this for me and it comes with three different sizes for a loaf pans. Um, two of them and then this one here is about the normal size I think. And then it comes with a medium size one. And then a miniature one, which is so cute. <laughs> this one's so cute. So three loaf size pans and wonderful glass. Love it. I love the glass ones. So thank you so much for all these wonderful gifts. And the loaf pans come with lids on them. Uh, of course, you don't put the lids on in the oven. But when you're storing the food in there, or if you have bread or the meatloaf, you can cover it up. So that's awesome. So thank you so much for these gifts. I love them. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you always thinking of me. So thank you. All right. I'm going to put this away and bring on the next one. All right, everyone. So this is the next friend mail. And as you can see, this is more so for Glenn as I don't drink coffee. But he is very happy to have this. And this comes from Deb. Thank you so much, Deb. I can't tell you how much we appreciate this. And even though I don't drink coffee, I appreciate you sending this. And Glenn really appreciates it. So uh, this is the kind of coffee Glenn has been drinking. Uh, McCafe Premium Roast Medium. So these, each can is a 30 ounce can. So one pound, 14 ounces. Oh, <laughs> he is, he is so, it's like Christmas morning for him. Uh, when we open these up. So thank you so much, Deb. We really appreciate this. And I, I really can't tell you how much we appreciate this. So thank you for this blessing. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this away and bring on the last of the, the friend mail. All right, everyone. So here is the last part of the friend mail. And wouldn't you know it, it's crafting. So as you know, I've been crafting since about the Christmas holiday. Um, and uh, as of late, I've really been wanting to do a lot more. So <laughs> over here, as you know, I use, if you've been watching my crafting, I use Mod Podge to as a liquid glue to glue down uh, pictures on wood and things like that. So what I've been considering doing is some outdoor crafting like uh, outdoor signs for the house or the garage and for that you need a different Mod Podge or in the house like if you want to do it on coffee mugs or something that's going to get water on it you do a water-based Mod Podge. So over here uh, these two are from different people so the Mod Podge both Mod Podges are from Colleen. So Colleen, thank you so much. Uh, you guys, um, for both of these items, you should have seen my reaction coming out of the box there. 
but I can't tell you how much I appreciate this Colleen. Now this is a dishwasher safe Mod Podge. So now both of these take 30 days to cure. So that means once you put something on like a coffee cup, cup or a glass, you cannot put it in the dishwasher for 30 days until this Mod Podge cures. So this is the dishwasher, dishwasher safe. It doesn't mean you only can use it on coffee mugs or glass or anything. Anything that might get a little bit of water on it, uh, just to seal it, uh, you might want to use a dishwasher safe Mod Podge. So thank you so much, Colleen. I can't tell you how much I appreciate these. And then, um, because I have considered doing some, like, uh, some pictures on mason jars and things like that and I don't want to wash them and have the ink run or the picture get ruined so um so yeah the dishwasher safe mod podge and then this mod podge is the outdoor exterior mod podge so this is would be if I did an outdoor sign and it's going to be in in some kind of weather rain or anything this is what I'm going to try for that um, there are other sealants for outdoor signs, um, but I thought I'd give the Outdoor Mod Podge a try. Again, they take 30 days to cure, so if I want to put a sign out for summer, I probably would want to start thinking about completing that sign, getting it um, sealed with this Mod Podge, and by the time it goes out for summer, you know, that 30 days has come by. All right, so thank you so much, Colleen. For, she sent both of these. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that and it, and am excited about it. So over here, I have wood slices, and these are from Mary Sanders. Mary, thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> I can't tell you how much I appreciate these. Uh, look at these wood slices with the bark still on them these are between i don't know if these are between three and four four inches in diameter i guess i should have measured them um i don't know if it says here yeah three and a half to four inches on each one they could be a little bit different in size the bark could be a little bit different but um i love these thank you so much i had these items in my amazon wish list and it was a surprise when they got here because I was not expecting these. <laughs> oh, I was not, we weren't expecting the coffee or anything, you know, any of the items we received. I, I did have an idea the loaf pans were coming. Um, but these and the loaf pan or the coffee, we totally unexpected and very surprised pleasantly <laughs> so there are 30 of these wood slices in here and if you were watching my beginning crafting during Christmas I made some uh, wood slice they did not have the bark they were just plain real thin I mean super thin slices from Walmart and I put uh, pictures one had like me and Glenn on it one had gypsy one had blackie and one had prissy and I made them as ornaments for a Christmas tree so my thought was to start this summer and make some Christmas ornaments from these and I think they're going to be so cute so I do want to start like selling at craft like there's a craft fair that goes uh, through I don't know if it's all summer or part of the summer into early fall in a town we uh, ride around in and they have a craft fair every Sunday and I thought to start making stuff to try to sell there as well as sell online but these are going to be I'm going to make some ornaments for us and some other things uh, non Christmas maybe some fall items fall decorations for our house and I absolutely love these with the bark on them they're so beautiful and much thicker than the ones I had bought from Walmart but thank you so much Mary I can't tell you how much I appreciate this oh 
I can't wait to start using this stuff. <laughs> All right, so they had that gypsy barking. Um, <laughs> she must have heard a truck going by. Um, okay, I'm going to go get her off the window. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you again to everybody for all the friend mail and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it uh, sorry about the barking but let's move on to the rest of the video hey everyone welcome back to the channel welcome to a new day it is uh, Monday just before 11 o'clock in the morning and I have something here as you can see it's a ham So when I went to festival the other day, last week or whenever it was, um, I totally did not see this sale. So I was looking through the festival site uh, with Easter coming up. I was looking for a ham and I saw that festival had the sale and I totally missed it. So this is a 8.28 pound smoked ham. And this was on sale for $16.49 for a little over 8 pounds of ham. So that was pretty amazing because regular price, they're like double that. They're like $42, $43 from what I've seen. So I went ahead and picked, some, picked one up. And I've already given a piece to Glenn. He was excited to try some. Uh, it's been a while since we got one of these hams and what I'm going to do is just uh, cut it up into pieces because sometimes we actually even have some for breakfast with eggs and I'm going to cut it up into pieces and then I'm going to lay it on this cutting all the pieces on the cutting board then I'm going to separate them into individual packs with like maybe three or four pieces in each pack depending on how big the pieces are and then wrap them up individual packs and then freeze them so that way when we want some ham we could just take out the individual little packs so I didn't want to throw it in the freezer as a whole ham and just save it for Easter that way because tonight I'll be making a supper salad or uh, if you want to call it a macaroni salad in which I actually was going to get some ham steak at the store and I figured, why bother getting the ham steak? Just, just use the ham off of here. Uh, cut some up and use it in our uh, salad. So, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut it up in uh, smaller pieces. And then it is a bone in. So what I normally do with the end pieces, I leave some ham on there. And then at some point, I could actually just freeze the bone and then make some pea soup for Glenn. Uh, that's what we usually do when we have a whole ham like this. Well, it's a half ham, but you know what I mean. And I put it in this dish, this casserole dish, because there is tons of juice on the bottom. And I didn't want it to just go everywhere. So if the juice is in the casserole dish, I can, uh, you know, probably save it for the bone. And include it in the juice for the pea soup. So... So yeah, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to just cut this up, and then I'll show you how much we have at the end. All right? I might, I might even munch on a piece or two. <laughs> All right, so stay tuned. All right, everyone. So I've cut quite a bit off the, the bone here. It is a bone in. I've got all this that I cut off that's pure meat. So I'm just going to cut them up into... Or package them actually I'm just gonna take the skin off and then I might just leave them like that and package them in packs and this one's pretty thick I'll, I'll break that up a little bit but uh, I did I did leave some ham on the bone I'm not this is not getting thrown away by all means uh, there's the bone so I'm going to freeze the bone with a ham on it and at some point when he wants to have it, I'll make a pea soup for him. And that way we already have the, the bone from the ham with some ham on it. And then he'll probably use some of the packaged ham from what I just cut up to add to it. 
it won't be a, like a huge pot of pea soup because he's the only one that eats it. So we don't need that much ham to go in it. But I left some pretty good sized pieces of ham on the bone for him. And I'll just freeze it like that. And what, like I said, whatever he wants to have pea soup, I could just take it off, take it out of the freezer. And that way all the ham is all ready to go. And yeah, I'm glad I did this because one thing I hate is to put a ham in the refrigerator, then constantly have to take it out to cut some off. So I figure I'll just cut it up all right now. So, all right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit and I'll be back. All right, everyone. So I have the ham all cut up and split up into packs. So I have six individual packs. Uh, some has more than the other. As you can see, this has a pretty good amount of ham. And I'm going to use this one to cut up for our salad, our macaroni salad tonight. So that's going to go for that. And then we'll most likely have at least one or two for breakfasts, which just because there's six packs doesn't mean there's six meals. Um, it could take us more than that. But one for sure will be used. I put the bone in right here. The, and I've got some pretty good chunks of ham on it still. But I'll use one of these packs to go to that for the pea soup. And then one will be for Easter. And sometimes we just like to munch on it. So, so yeah, so that's what I've done. Okay, everyone. So, my next project, <laughs> my next crafting project. Um, I don't know if you remember this picture frame I brought home from the Dollar Tree. Um, I kind of took it apart already, but I forgot to show you what frame it was. So, you kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here. All right, so this is the picture frame. This was the inside photo, and it came with a clothespin right there to clothespin uh, like a 4 by 6 photo there. I just kind of took it apart. I'm going to keep this clothespin, and I'm going to keep this because I can use this on something else as well. And that's the thing when you're crafting and you buy something, if you're not going to use the whole thing, keep it because you can use it on another crafting project so here is the frame it's very lightweight and this was the backing i'm going to leave this here i'm going to turn it this way and this is what i'm going to do these are paint stir sticks they're 12 inches i ordered like a pack of 100 off amazon uh, i don't know how many months ago and i want to use them for some projects so if you notice, they got this, these little grooves in here. So what I'm going to do is cut them down to size where they fit the inside of this frame. So I'm going to end up gluing them together so you kind of get an idea. I'm going to paint it. I'm going to cut them off right here so they actually fit here and so forth <laughs> so i'll cut them off i'll glue them all together and then i'll paint the whole thing as one and then or paint them individually and then glue them to this as i put them in so it'll be like a whole row of these wood sticks and then for the the decoration on it I would like to put something in the kitchen that says Karina's kitchen or bless this kitchen. I could do a sign of both. So that's kind of what I thought for here for this project. And I'll hang it up in the kitchen. So I think it'll look real cute. Okay, so that's what I'm going to work on. <laughs> so I got to measure these to see where I got to cut it. And then once I got that measurement and then I cut it, I'll test it to make sure it's correct. And then I'll try to cut with my miter box. I'll show you the miter box. This here is a miter box. You put your wood in here and you could cut it straight across or at different angles 
as if you were making picture frames you put them at an angle or you could just make them straight and these pegs are to hold that wood in place and it comes with a saw i did use it the other night oh yeah when i made gypsy's uh collar and uh leash hanging uh, board so all right so i'm gonna try to get this one and then i'll be back to let you know what i'm doing next all right everyone so i cut this piece down and it fits perfectly in there it did <laughs> all right uh, okay so there it goes right there all right, so I just got to count how many across I'm going, and then I'll stack those on top of each other, and then slide them into this miter box and cut them down. All right, everyone, so I taped seven sticks together. I have them as flush as I can get them on the tips there, and then I marked where I need to cut it to be at the same length as this one. So... It's not going to be perfect, but we're going to give it a try. And these pegs are to hold the wood down. I ordered this off Amazon. Uh, I'm not sure when. I'm going to do the straight cut. I don't need an angle cut. And I just want to line up my mark where the straight line is, right in the slot there. Okay, I think I got it there. And now these, I go to the the first full hole and I turn it <laughs> maybe this one okay so as I turn it that way to the left it presses up against the wood and the wood doesn't move and I'll do the same for this side All right, so the wood's not moving in there, and now I can cut. Now normally if you use this, you can actually clamp it down to a table, but I don't need a permanent fixture on it. Okay, so it cut all the way through, all seven of them. And here are the pieces with the grooves. Now, I'm not going to throw these away because you can use them for multiple things. So I'm going to keep these. And here's the length I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to loosen this. And now it pops out. So what I'm going to do is just take some sandpaper... Just sand it down a little bit so the edges aren't so rough. Mm, like butter. All right. So now I'm just going to clean up this mess because I don't want any wood shavings just laying around. So I will be back. All right, so here is the moment of truth. I haven't tested the ones I just cut, so you're seeing as you're going to see it as I see it. Looks like oh, that's not too bad.
Now there's going to be one at the end, which I'm actually going to have to split this way. And, well, not too bad. Pretty good fit. So what I'll do is paint them. And then I think I'll do one at a time. I'll paint, paint each one of them and then glue them in one at a time. This one or whatever one's last, it's not going to fit all the way in there. Just shy. I don't have to get that much off. That's the problem. Oh, wait a minute. There it goes. Squeezed it in there. Awesome. I think I once I get them glued down, it'll be better. Right now they're like popping up because I squeezed that one in there. This one here looks like it's Oh, might be a little short, but that's okay. All right. All right, so now I'm just going to paint it. Paint each one, and then I'll have to let them dry. Okay, so now I'm ready to paint my sticks here. And I have just a little bit of water in there. And I have this Waverly Antique Wax. Uh, it's kind of like a stain color, a, br a dark brown, but if you put it in a little bit of water, it doesn't come out as dark and should look more like a lighter stain. So we're going to put some in there. I don't know how much water you need <laughs> or whatever, so hopefully it's okay. All right. So what I like to do, I don't like to leave the paint drip all over the bottle. So I like to clean it up right away. I guess I'm just, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure eventually they're just going to look like paint running everywhere. <laughs> but all right, so I'm going to take my brush and just kind of stir this around. Let me close up the paint before it spills. Oh, I almost lost that one. And let's give it a test. This is my first time actually doing it, so I guess you learn by trial and error. This paper is not too uh, sturdy. I've been keeping paper bags to use to paint under. I don't know if you could tell, but because the water is in there, it kind of leaves the wood grain in there a little bit, the color of the wood grain. Otherwise, it would just be like a totally dark brown. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do the rest, and I'll be back. Hey everyone, so I am back in the craft room, and the last time I was in here working on my projects, I was um, <laughs> repainting these white. So if you recall, I cut out the sticks and painted them uh, like almost like a brown stain and then I should have thought about it uh, before I did that because what I realized then is I didn't have anything on the lighter side to go over that as in uh, white white print or anything like that so I was kind of at a standstill as to what I should do and so what I thought to do is I cut out this, I printed this on regular uh, copy paper and what I, and I cut it out. Background is white. I didn't print it on the transparent, transparent sticker paper because the colors just did not come out good. 
So I printed it on copy paper and what I did was I took the sticks and I painted them white. <laughs> so so now I'm going I've got my hot glue gun warming up and now I'm going to glue these down. And then this will go over that. And then I thought to put it this way, it probably looked better that way, but then my sticks are too short. <laughs> I I if I put them that way, then I'm missing one on top. Well, I suppose I could, it would look a little off. So, so that's okay. I'm just going to do it this way. Put this there. I kind of want some, uh, spring slash summer things hanging up on the wall. So that's why I printed out. I like the water can with the flowers coming out of it. I thought, I think it'll look nice. All right. So, so yeah, that's where I'm at. All right, so as soon as my hot glue gun warms up, I'm gonna start hot gluing these sticks to here. And then we'll finally get this project completed. All right, everyone, so I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing these down now. I think what I'll do is I'll put them on the back side now. I just wanted to get that first one in there. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get the rest in, and then we'll go ahead and just let that set for a little bit, and then I'll put that picture on. Alright, stay tuned. I'll be right back. Alright everyone, so I've got all the sticks mod are, uh, hot glued in here, so they are sticking. Yeah, this last one, <laughs> it was a little easier to get it in without the glue, um, but I made it happen. So, <laughs> all right. So, and actually, I like this white chalk paint look more than the brown stain look that was originally on these sticks. This actually just gives it a more country vibe, I guess, uh, farmhouse, if you will. But I love that farmhouse country um, kind of look on these things so the only thing I didn't do was paint the frame itself but I think I'm gonna leave it that way it kind of makes the white pop out a little bit more so just to give you an idea of how this will look on here so that's pretty much how it's gonna go let's see yeah yeah that's that's what it's gonna look like and so I'm going to mod, put some Mod Podge down and then put the picture over it. All right, so let's get ready to do that. All right, we are ready to Mod Podge this thing. And I'm just using a sponge brush. Now when Mod Podge dries, it dries clear. Yeah, it's been a, a few days since I came into the craft room because I was so stuck on how I wanted to do this. 
and then I painted the sticks white and then I just let them dry and I didn't come back in for a few days so sometimes you just gotta take a step back until it that picture comes into your mind as to how you want it to look. I guess that's just what kind of happened. All right, so let's get this picture down. Well, it's still wet. Now, there is another method as to Mod Podging. I'll talk about that in a minute. I want to make sure it's straight. So with my hand, I'm just going to put it out there. Get some Mod Podge on these areas here. Yeah, there's uh, different ways you can Mod Podge. A lot of people, I guess you call this decoupage. And uh, decoupage is a form of putting pictures down on some kind of a surface like this. There's a lot of crafters that use uh, napkins. They decoupage with napkins which really looks nice. I don't have any nap <laughs> napkins. And I mean decorative napkins, like they have nice uh, pictures on them, like flowers, bees, you know, birds, whatever. I just don't have any of that. But printing out on photo paper also works. And you can even use heavier things like cardstock or greeting cards. Um, all right. I'm bound to get better the more I do this. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm just going to let this dry, and then I'm going to put a coat of Mod Podge over it. So, while that's drying, um, another form of, another way to use Mod Podge when you're doing something like this, is if you have like a little uh, heat press, it doesn't have to be a big one. There's a lot of them are, that just fit in the palm of your hand. But a heat press and uh, what you would do is apply your Mod Podge before you put the picture down as I did. But you would let it completely dry. And then you would put your picture down, put parchment paper over it, and then go over, go over it with the heat press. And what that does is reactivates the Mod Podge, uh, br basically bringing it back to life. So the picture will just stick to it. So, and then once you do that, you can either put another layer of Mod Podge over the picture or leave it as is. But that's another form, another way of Mod Podging. I just don't have a heat press right now. And, uh, but I think I'm going to get one. So... So yeah, but I think this works for now. <laughs> but I do get some wrinkles 
when you do it that way, I believe your picture comes out wrinkle free. When you do it, well, it's still wet, especially like with uh, photo or uh, copy paper. Uh, I do get some bubbling up here, but you really can't. If you're looking from afar, you're not going to tell unless you walk up to it because I'm up close looking at it. But when I get a heat press, I'm going to get one. They're not that expensive. Um, I'm going to uh, try the other way. And uh, I think that way might be better. So, all right. So right now I'm going to let this dry and then... We'll see about putting a coat over the photo. All right, so I will be back. All right, everyone. So here is the final crafting project. Uh, project. So I went ahead and Mod Podge the top layer of the picture. And then what I thought was we had a big empty space here. So this part right here, it's just some flowers. This butterfly was actually a part of this picture and I just cut it out and put it up here. And then this is a, from a photo. This butterfly is from a photo I took of that butterfly and then printed it out on that transparent sticker paper. So I went ahead and I thought some butterflies would be nice. So I put that butterfly there and I just used the stick of glue from the Dollar Tree because these were afterthoughts. And I had already Mod Podged all of it, so I didn't want to have to do that again. So I just used a stick of glue. And I glued the butterfly there and these flowers here at the corner. So I thought it gave it a nice touch. And now I have it hanging on the wall. So yeah, I want to make some stuff that reflects summer, spring and summer with flowers and birds, butterflies and all those things I love in nature. So... That is the final project, and I think the white sticks, when I painted the white sticks and the seams in them, I think it gives it a nice, maybe vintage look, and I love the country style vintage look, so there is the final product.